Hi, I'm Tiger Woods, here with Colin Marikawa, and this is Tiger Talks. I'll play it toe down, hands high, ball up, and they'd be as shallow as I possibly can right there, like that. Yeah, it's a hell of a shot. All right, well, uh, let's talk. I think we just go through some tough shots. I mean, I, okay. I think just go the through. basic ones are too easy. Basic, I mean, around here, we, is, you can see it's Bermuda, but overseeded. It's sitting up against some weird lies. For us, we're, we're both getting ready for a tournament. And so we're talking about a place that you always get bad lies, a ball sitting down. How do you get the ball up with spin? Or do you have a drivey with with spin or how do you not fat it yeah. <laughs> a lot of I times. Think, I think the worst, like in my head, like first time I started playing these lies, the worst, the, the first thing I thought about was like not, not duffing it. Not duffing it, correct. Two feet in front of you. And I, you're giving strokes away, but I, I always, I think for me, I always think spin before height. Yep, yep, um, get it. But out of this lie, I don't think you're ever getting spin. No, we're not getting spin. I tend to play a lot of these shots with my 56. They got a little more bounce than my 60. And I try and be as shallow as possible. I mean, obviously there are times when I will play a lot of wrist set and hit down on it with wrist set. But a lot of these shots, I'll try and play as stiff wristed, kind of like Stricker, very stiff wristed, yeah. very wide on both sides and shallow on both sides to, to make sure that, ensure that I don't dig it. Where were you ball position though? Like if you're going, just say you had to land it. I mean, just say we only had six feet short of the pin, right? Ball would be up, face would be open, toed as down as I possibly can, and I'm going to try and hit the ball out of the middle of the face, not off the toe. People but like people like the high toe. I yeah, uh, I always hit. I hit a lot of shots off the toe. But and not, I I don't because if I hit it off the toe, I don't get as much spin. Okay. If I hit off the middle, I get more spin. So I'll play it toe down, hands high, ball up. What I like to do is sometimes put the ball in off the heel and they'd be as shallow as I possibly can right there, like that. Shallow. What do you think for shallow? I mean, every like everyone talks about being shallow, right? And I say wide on both sides. Okay. So again, like very little wrist set on both sides. Yeah. L less wrist set on the way back, less release on the way through, kind of almost like a putting stroke, a long pendulum putting stroke motion. Feel-wise, are you, because like I, I'd say nine out of 10 times if I'm missing, if I do miss my target, I'm missing the short. Short, I always be as aggressive as I can. Cause I, the reason why I can be more aggressive cause I don't have any wrist set. Got it. There's no power, there's yeah. no hit. So I'm being more aggressive. See, I would never hit one that high cause I can't cause I have my 56. Yeah, but I'd take that. Yeah, like, absolutely. That's a shot I'd take all day in that, in a grainy situation, ball sitting down. Okay, let's see if you got a lie, get a little more grain. Somebody's already been there, like you. You just been there, like yep. that, like that. Where I still have to carry it, or yeah, just like, well, like how would you actually get this close? Forget carry it. Just yeah. Try, how do you get this close? For me, I think this one sitting down, knowing that I can't really get to the ball. Just say it's a little grain you're yeah, in. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am actually gonna like almost take it like a bunker shot. Okay. And just kind of take it steep and behind the ball. So okay. I'll set up like a bunker shot a little bit, not as far forward. Yep, yep. Open it up. If I open it up too much, too much bounce, I'll just normal mount and then kind of just splash it out. Yeah, it's a hell of a shot. That's Great if shot. I like have yeah. room to, to carry. I got you, I got you. You, if you were to play it, I mean. Give me a lot. Right here. Thanks. <laughs> um. <laughs> Here, let's just go like sitting down a little bit more than the previous ones. Okay. I would actually, I'm, I'm actually thinking about actually putting it back in my stance on this one. Face open, 
as wide open as I can get, and I'm actually going to try and close it down a little bit at impact. And pop it up that way. Almost like a, like a mini little... A mini little kind of hook little dr yeah. drawing shot out of okay. that thing. So do you because, notice like... Because if, if I come down and I feel like I'm closing it down a little bit, I'm using less bounce and using more leaning edge to get Got into the golf ball at a steeper okay. angle. So you still like starting it open. I like starting it open. And then feeling the closed. And then feeling the closed so I can create that face getting steeper into the golf ball to get down underneath it. You're using without, your hands. Okay, without I like that. It. So you're using your, you're using your hands to get a little steeper. Yes, I am. Steeper. Sorry, versus like me, because I've never thought of it. So like for me, when I think steep, yep. I kind of just put back of the stance, and then I stay forward like a, you know, like Jordan, how Jordan does yeah, it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a different way of getting steep, where you're using your hands to kind of. I do a lot of stuff with my hands on how I hit shots. Um, like you would say, like I'm hitting to a back left pin back there. If I had a good lie. I could actually, with my 56, I could actually play a little bit of a cut back into this wind. Or I could tow it down and line it just on the green and run it up the hill. So I'd play both ways. How are you playing a cut? Because even though I hit a, even though I like, I have to have I less loft. Less loft, okay. So you so can feel I can't it do with stay this, open. I can't do it with a 60. Got it. It's too much loft. If Ideally, I do it with a pitching wedge or a 56. I like that, like draw. I think because even if it's grainy, yes, you're still you're continuing it forward, right? And I think that's what, like most like most people next week for a tournament that's super grainy. Correct. If they stop, you're stopping your entire hands and exactly. If, even if you catch a little behind and you think draw, yes, it's all going through. Isn't yeah, exactly. It? So even if I want to hit the ball a little bit higher and then draw it, my face is going to be open, but I'm going to start trying to close it down and move forward. As you said, chest forward, leaning yeah. forward. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm moving hands and body forward at the same time to draw it. To get you'll still angle. get a little, you'll get more spin, but just. I get more spin, but I'm also ensuring that I don't fat it. Okay. Draws if you don't want to fat it, essentially. Correct. It's shallower, keeps everything going forward. Forward. Makes sense. There, there's so many different ways of looking at it and doing it. Yeah. Well, I just think for me, like, I I always go to, like, a low, like, I, I want the nice little check. You want to be able to control the spin, right? Yeah, of course Every you do. Every time, you know, based on the lie, if you lose yeah. that ability to know what it's going to do, that's where it all, you start guessing almost sometimes, right? Yeah, and that's where sometimes I look at what a guy like Strix or Jason Day are really wide on both sides. Yeah. And we're able to spin it from kind of tough situations. Yep. But then they have, you know, shots where I would like to um, I would like to hinge it with my wrist to create angle and then drive it or hold the angle as long as I can to hit a driving Those are like a, a driving into spinner a, into a slope just say you're like, like that, lining it up like there. a driving spinner. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't care if you get when you hit those Cause like you, I mean, I'm you're way shallower than what I do. Yeah. Are you still, you still don't take that big of a divot? Because I'm not leaning as far forward as you are with the okay, upper okay. body. Right. Most of my stuff is done with my hands, doing the same thing that you're it's doing. Staying on the same level. I'm, but... Yes, exactly. I'm still moving forward. I'm so still driving. So if you feel okay, so like a drivey, because like when I feel, just say we had to land it in that slope, right? Yep. I I go back of the stance, knowing that you can hit it as hard as you want. It's gonna kill it. Yep. It's going to stop, right? Yep. I just go back to the stance, and then I just kind of keep my hands forward and set. I see what you're saying. You know? Yeah. Do you, because I I'd let my hands set like that, and then I just hold it? Are you, What are you I, feeling in that type of there, shot? There are two shots that I would play. One would be that one. But I would. it depends if I'm drawing or cutting it. Yeah. So are you always trying to pick a draw or cut? I'm doing something with it. Uh, okay, because that's like I've something. never I've never done that. Like I I'm always doing something with it. So like for this for, for like this shot right now, you got wind coming off the right. So okay. I'm gonna want to try and hold it with a little bit of a cut. So again, back, ball back in my stance, face open. But now I'm driving it forward, but I'm also swinging towards you at the same time. Okay. That's 
That's so interesting. How many guys have you ever met that are trying to move the ball right to left to left? Not necessarily moving it, but the, the thought of it, right? Because people talk about, I want to draw it. Like you hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to draw it, but in reality, they're probably playing a straight shot. Have you met many guys that try and like? Sebi, Ollie. Yeah. They were always trying to do something with it. Sebi was always trying to teach me how to make the ball roll straight every single time. And then you would choose to make it roll right or left, but the ball should roll every time like a putt, no matter what shot you're hitting, no matter how high you're hitting it. Okay. Which kind of freaked me out in my head. Yeah, I'm like, my mind's kind of like, thinking okay, about that hit really hard right now. How do, you, how do you hit a high with the making it roll like dead straight like a putt? He's figured out. <laughs> okay. So you almost let your body, yeah. If you can think of it as, okay, think the of ball's going to constantly it. doing that. And how would you make a chip? Well, you're reading the fifth chip goes from right, right to left. If you're reading it right to left, but you're playing, your natural instinct is to cut it, well, then it doesn't break as much. Okay. So you can't read it like a putt. People yeah. say read it like a putt. What shot are you going to play? So it's going to move yeah. like a putt. It's like when I see it, when I have like a perfectly flat, that's, I only think of it only when I have a perfectly flat, makeable chip from, mm -hmm. you know, eight yards where I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I know my ball's going to cut spin. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to end up seeing. But right. I've actually never thought of it. Yeah, I, I've heard of people all the time, oh, read your chip like a putt. Yeah, I yeah. can read an eight iron or four iron or six iron or nine iron, like a chip and run off the green. But as I get further back or have to use more loft, it's not going to, I'm not going to always have it rolled dead straight every single time. I actually, I think about it with my irons, but not my wedges. <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably why, like, my irons are sometimes better than my 30-yard wedge shot. Um, because, like, you think about slope. Like, if you yes, you try do. and land it on a slope, Absolutely. you know it's going to run out. I mean, Augusta is the best example. Correct. You, you're using our fighting slope all the time. It's, it's always, slope is your friend. Whether yeah. you choose to fight it or use it, um, it's up to the shot. That's so interesting. Again, so middle face. Draw. So, I I mean, my wear marks are rarely on the toe. Always in the middle. It's always in the middle. Yeah, mine are, I have a lot. I don't like, I don't bunker like shots. the toe. You're hitting bunker shots off the middle too? Yeah. Now, why'd you set up, why'd you set it up on the hill, on the, the draw one? Because I'm going to drive and move it, move my hand left towards you. I was going to move it more left. As I'm moving it more left, I'm moving the, the sweet spot more out towards. Got it. Which is why I always tow it. So you would tow it. I would set up on the heel and then hit it out of the middle still. Got it. And I found that hitting out of the middle, I get more spin than I would have hitting it off the toe. Hitting off the toe makes the ball come off more dead. That's why people like seeing hitting it on the high toe. Yeah. It comes out dead. But there's not. But there's not enough spin. Yeah. So I like have... to spin it. Okay. That's why I hit I like hitting it off the middle of the face all the time. That makes sense. I want to grab as much as much of the grooves that I possibly can to spin it like that. I mean that to me is cool. Yeah, well, to me, like, you have more control, I think, when you find it out of the middle. There's no guessing, right? Correct. Because sometimes out of the toe, you can still catch a little bit of a spinner. Every now and again, every now and again but hit or miss. it is a softer shot, though, yeah. right? High toe is a soft shot, but out of the middle of the face, I feel like I'm spinning the ball more often than I'm not. All right, we're done. We're done. How's I got that? my lessons. Thanks. <laughs> um, that was a good shot right sense. there. Yeah, because I set it up. It's not like I set it up on the toe, but I find it, I find myself hitting it more on the toe than I'd like, essentially. It, everyone's different. And it also depends on your bounce setup and how much offset you have. All right, we'll talk, talk about, because I've Where, been using your, your grind. Yep. I've been talking about, or talk about your grind, how you got to build this, because like my whole thing, when I first turned pro, like I had six different grinds that I'd kind of throw in and, yeah, yeah. and go around. But like, this is the first year where I actually used yours and I, the entire year. And I loved it for the most part. Like there's two I spots. I find it as, uh, I try to make my wedge as a universal wedge because I was a world, I was a world player. I played mm -hmm. all around the world and different grasses, different lies, uh, different textures, 
all, all different. I want a universal wedge, so I don't have to. The only place I would alter it maybe and go to one or two degrees less bounce would be the British Open. Open. Yeah, I do that. I, that's, 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 that's the only one. That was the one place that. But then again, I, I don't sacrifice my 56 there because of the sand is so beachy. Okay. That you, if you, it, you hit a normal 60, it's never going to come out. You can't hit it hard enough. Mm -hmm. So I would use my 56 out of a lot of those pot bunkers anyways and just use that. But I, I, I like having a little bit of bounce and a little bit of relief off the heel, but I like beveling the leading edge. Yeah. You see how it's yep. beveled on the Absolutely. front. It's just because I find it off a of tight lies, I'm able to get that toe, sorry, the leading edge down to the golf ball better than someone who's got a higher bounce or the bounce is further back away from the leading edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to be able to hit that, like I said, that shot, be able to turn that thing down and get underneath that, get on top of that golf ball and get over that grass that's sitting behind the ball. By beveling the front, I'm able to get that leading edge down. I'm able to do that more often than not. Than not. Okay. And that's why I designed my wedge the way I did. Yeah. No, I mean, I because love I it. I play that shot quite a bit. Got it. If you're in between 56 and 60? 60. 60. 60. The, well, okay. Okay. Out of Bermuda grass, 56. All day. All day. Grain. Grain. Okay. Now, if, I, if I'm if i on rye, then I use a 60 quite a bit. But out of Bermuda like this, this stuff that's thatchy, grainy, then I'll take my 56 and I'll take my chances. Okay. And also, don't forget, I grew up with the 56 as most of my life. Yeah. So the 60 was just like a bonus club wasn't a club I always went to. It was just like a bonus club. To be honest, like I'll go, sometimes I'll, I won't even practice with my 60 because it, when you see 60 degrees and you see how much loft it actually is, it's it's near cheating. Yeah, and that's also one of the reasons why I like to chip with all different lofts around the greens. So what, as I just explained earlier, uh, a eight iron, six iron or four iron chip shot because that's what I'll use around the greens to hit certain chip and runs. Yeah. Whether it's a bump and run or I'm just off the green. Like one of my 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 mentors was Raymond Floyd. Everything had to land within a yard of the green, a yard on. If you land it a yard on, you can actually make it roll like a putt. So whatever it took to make that ball you land a yard on the green, that's the shot you would play. That's the club you'd play, and then you have to figure out the, the release. So on a shot from here to up there, to me that looks like an eight or nine iron. Because it looks like a putt. How do you, how, how, how then, you play then like then a putt? Then you can read like a putt because you're not cut spinning it. You're hitting it pretty, pretty standard with an 8 or 9 iron. Or especially if you get to like a 6 iron or 4 iron, it's yeah. very standard. But as you get more lofted, things change. Okay. I love that. Read it like a putt, even though you have a wedge. Yeah, but it depends on... No, what but you, like you can still, you can still read it like a putt even if you draw or cut it, though. Yeah, totally. Because you could like... I mean, you could, like you said, you can go to that pin... Like on a shot like this, if I had a if I had a great lie like that, well, I can make this ball hook more if I wanted to. Right. Or I could hold it between the two golf balls with a cut spin yep. and hold it against the hill. And if I was playing on fast greens, I would choose that shot to just kind of just to kill, kill it. More. Yeah. Kill it on the slope and kill it against the hill. So I would hit some kind of cutter in there and then hold it between those two golf balls. Here's a wild question. Um, glove versus no glove. No glove. Only time I used to, I used to use the glove all the time. Then I realized that um, I had more touch and more feel without a glove. But out of the bunker, because I'm hitting it so much harder, you need, it was need twisting grip. in my hand. Okay. So I, I put on a glove for traction out of a bunker shot. Okay. But otherwise, and occasionally, if I'm hitting a really hard full swing flop shot, I'll put the glove on because of the twist of the grass. It may turn my club because I'm hitting so much grass behind the golf ball. Yeah. Like now I wear it all the time, but I used to only wear it like if it was Bermuda because mm -hmm. of grain because I wanted it to keep going forward. Correct. See? Yeah. But I feel like if you know your technique yeah. and you know what you're doing with the with the actual head, then it's fine because you know it's going to continue. Yeah. I just like feeling like it's like putts. I, I put without a glove. So I'd rather chip without a well, glove. I, I, yeah, 99% of people. Yeah, but, a but when I hit a full swing flop shot or I had to fight a lot of resistance, like hitting out of high ryegrass or out of sand, hitting behind it is going to want to twist in my hand. And that yeah. glove gives me an added sense of security. 
that it won't twist. Okay. I love that. Here's a quite another one for you. Are you, I feel like I know the answer, but I'm asking it because I asked Strick this question too, and he gave me a completely different answer that I never thought he would. You are a spot chipper or no? No. You're not? No, I'm not. No, I'm an area, I, it's an area. I look at that shot and I kind of feel it. And then my body, as I'm building it and sensing it and building the lie, I'm sensing where about where I need to land it, about. But it, at the end of the day, the it's about of, where it's gonna finish. Yes. Okay. I'm not looking at an exact spot and I'm practicing to like a, a quarter on a green or a tee on a green. Yeah. Because that drives me nuts because not every lie is the same. So I can't land it on the same spot every single time because my lie is slightly different. Yeah, okay, well I was wrong then. <laughs> and then if I'm gonna be doing something different with a lie slightly different each and every time, then I can't land it on the same exact spot okay. every time. Interesting. So that's why I choose not to, but I'll be in like an area. Like I know like this shot is just past those little sand things and I'm looking just past it somewhere. Yeah, to, and then but I'm you're gonna, not trying to land it perfectly no i don't i don't i i find my that became too restrictive for me yeah because of the lie differences the lie matters so much lies I, everything it's every, it's, that determines it's everything you do. every single shot it does from uh, from t boxes like we played it on certain designed major championships <laughs> venues yeah where the t, t boxes aren't level right yeah 100 it, it changes what you do yeah Every shot we hit from the fairway, rough, around the greens, the lie determines everything we do. Okay. All starts with, all starts with the with lie. With the lie Re and reading it. And this is what, you know, as you go older and you get more mature throughout the game, junior golf through amateur golf to young professional golf and you get older in your career, you start reading lies better. Yeah. What lies are going to come, what lies are not going to spin, what mm -hmm. lies are going to have a ton of spin, what you could, you know, spin it more. Yeah. Some lies are just, you know, it's just, it's going to plop no matter what I do. Riviera's, Riviera's my favorite because it's oh, just, everything grass? tees up. Oh, it's just. Everything tees up and you're just like, I can, I can short side myself anywhere. And you, I you're going to rip it. You're going to rip it. And when we, when we were younger and played a lot of balls from this distance, well, oh, I might be able to spin one back. Yeah. And in the wind, oh, tee up off Kukui grass, <laughs> tee one off from right here, a little easy. wind. I could actually it's spin so this ball fun. back. It's so much fun.